So in this video, we will try to understand the process of finding uh, the horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field with the help of a deflection magnetometer and vibration magnetometer. These two instruments we are going to use and with the help of this we are going to find the value of horizontal component of Earth's magnetic field. So let us see the instrument which is being used in this experiment. Uh, two magnetometer we are going to use, one is known as the deflection magnetometer and second is the vibration magnetometer. This instrument which you are looking just now, it is the deflection magnetometer. In the deflection magnetometer, there is a magnetic needle uh, which is having a magnetic uh, uh, magnet, small magnet, north and south pole of the magnet and uh, perpendicular to that magnet there is an uh, this pointer and this pointer can move itself in this circular scale so this is a magnetic compass nothing else and this is this is one side of arm for me it is the left arm of the magnetometer and this is the right arm but when we are going to use this magnetometer suppose we are orienting it in east west direction then obviously one arm will be called the east arm and the second arm will be called the west arm both the arms are having a scale and scale is calibrated from the center of the needle so from center the distances of the points can be measured with the help of this scale in the east arm as well as in the west arm both the scales are having their zero centered at the center of the needle so that is the first magnetometer that is the deflection magnetometer the second magnetometer is vibration magnetometer you can see this this vibration magnetometer is basically having two screws here with the help of which the height of the magnetometer can be changed as well as this magnetometer can be made uh, horizontal this surface will be horizontal with the help of these two screws. We are going to use the spirit level for making it horizontal. Then this is one opener. With the help of this opener, I can open this magnetometer. Inside it, you can see a hanger is there, this hanger. In this hanger, we can put the magnet. This magnet is hanged in the hanger. And while experimenting, we will show how we are going to hang it. The hanger's height can be varied with the help of this. Uh, one arrangement is there. The thread is attached to this. And the height can be adjusted with the help of this. Now, whenever we use this magnetometer, we try to keep it in magnetic north-south. And we keep the magnet obviously when we are keeping it north south the magnet is going to align itself along north south so in that position the magnet will become stationary and whenever it is displaced from its mean position obviously it will try to move uh, to get its mean position and this way it is going to start oscillating and the oscillation will be a simple harmonic motion so that's all about this second magnetometer that is the uh, vibration magnetometer The next uh, instrument which we are going to use for the measurement of length and breadth of the magnet is a vernier calipers. So what you are seeing just now is vernier calipers and let me show the parts of this vernier calipers and every part we are going to explain and then we are going to see how we can read this vernier calipers. So you can see this is a vernier calipers this scale is the main scale and this scale is the vernier scale again you can see in the main scale there are two scales one is the lower scale and the second is the upper scale the upper scale is in inches and the lower scale is in centimeter or millimeter so obviously whenever we are going to use a cgs unit we are not going to consider this upper scale instead we are going to consider only the lower scale 
because we are not using FPS unit. So this, this belongs to FPS unit. Now accept that so many parts are there. You can see this is screw here, this screw. This screw is the locking screw. Whenever we slide and at any position, we have to stop this vernier calipers for reading. Then with the help of this screw, we can lock it. Second is the, the, the second scale, which can slide over the first scale. You can see this is the moving scale. This scale is the moving scale. This is moving scale and this is the fixed scale. So this is fixed jaw. This is moving jaw. This one is the moving jaw. This is the fixed jaw. This is main scale. This one is the vernier scale. So we are going to use this main scale as well as this vernier scale only. Now this is the slider. We push it and by pushing it we can slide. So this is the slider. This one. Now, first of all, we have to take the zero error of this vernier calipers. For getting zero error, what we do, we, we make the moving jaw, we bring the moving jaw in contact with the fixed jaw. And when this is the position, then we see what is the position of the reference mark of main scale and the reference mark of the vernier scale. You can see here. This is the reference of the main scale. This one is the reference of the vernier scale. They are coincident. There is no difference. So obviously we can say that in this vernier calipers, the zero error is equal to zero. Now second thing is we have to calculate the least count or the vernier constant of this instrument. So to determine vernier constant, although the process is long process, but I am going to tell you each and everything about it. Basically, the vernier constant is the difference in the length of one smallest division of main scale and one smallest division of the vernier scale. So mind it, the main scale has been calibrated in mm. So this is calibrated, this 10 mm means 1 cm, 2 cm, 3 cm, 4 cm onwards. Now, the lower scale is not calibrated in mm. So what we have to find is, we have to find the difference in the one smallest division of the main scale and one smallest division of the vernier scale. So one smallest division, if you can see in this scale, from 0 to 10 mm is divided into 10 divisions. So obviously the smallest division of main scale is going to be equal to 1 millimeter. But the vernier scale is not having the same length. So let us try to find what will be the uh, distance between one division of the vernier scale. Means what will be the value of one division of vernier scale in mm. As we have calculated the distance between two marks in the main scale to be equal to one mm. For that you can see here, you can easily see if you can see here the 50 divisions there are 50 divisions, 0 to 1, 5 division, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 and 50. So 50 divisions of the vernier scale are exactly equal to the 49 division of main scale. Can you see here? 50 divisions of the main scale are exactly equal to 49 divisions of the main scale. So obviously, one division of the vernier is going to be equal to 49 upon 50 of main scale. Okay? 50 divisions of vernier are equal to 49 divisions of main scale. Means, 50 divisions are equal to 49 mm. So one division will be equal to 49 divided by 50 mm. So the difference between one division of main scale and one division of vernier scale will be 1 mm minus 49 by 50 mm. That is 50 minus 49 upon 50 mm. That is equal to 1 upon 50 mm. That is equal to 0 0.02 mm. So 0 0.02 mm is the vernier constant of this instrument or 0 0.002 mm is centimeter is the vernier constant of this instrument either 0.02 mm or 0.002 centimeter 
is going to be the vernier constant now let us see how we take reading suppose i have to take reading then suppose this is the reading that i want to read this is the reading i want to read it so i have to see main scale as well as the vernier scale ठीक है मेन स्केल एंड वर्नियर स्केल नाउ यू कैन सी हियर इफ यू इफ यू वांट टू फाइंड मेन स्केल रीडिंग यू हैव टू फाइंड द जीरो दैट इज रेफरेंस ऑफ द वर्नियर कैलिपर्स हैज क्रॉस्ड सर्टेन डिविजन्स एंड हियर यू कैन सी इट हैज क्रॉस्ड 15 आल्सो क्रॉस्ड 16 बट इट हैज नॉट क्रॉस्ड द 17 एमएम मार्क यू कैन सी हियर इट इज this zero has not crossed 17 mm it it seems to be a little bit coincident but it is it has not crossed so obviously the reading will be 16 mm the main scale reading will be equal to 16 mm now you have to see which division of the vernier calipers is exactly coincident exactly coincident with any division of main scale so 50 divisions are there starting from zero you go on go on observing which division is getting coincident and you are going to find the division on which 9 is written and after that one uh, that is after 9 that is 9.1 9 means 45 and next to 9 is 46 so 46 division is coincident with any division so vernier scale reading will be 46th division multiplied by the least count that is 0.02 mm so the total reading will be 16 plus 46 multiplied by 0.02 mm that will be the total reading so this is all about the next instrument which we are going to use and that is the vernier calipers now because we want to know the moment of inertia of this magnet and in the formula of moment of inertia it is very essential to know the length of the magnet so to find out the length of the magnet i have kept the magnet's length in between the two jaws that is the fixed jaw and the moving jaw and now i am going to read the length of it so when i want to know the main scale reading i have to see this reference line zero which division of this main scale has been crossed you can see here the reference line zero has not crossed 80 mark that is 8 cm mark has not been crossed but 7.9 has been crossed so 7.9 is the main scale reading 7.9 is the main scale reading now we want to see what is the vernier scale reading to see vernier scale reading you can see that zero mark is not coincident with 80 obviously the second one mark is not coincident with the 81 and so on if you go on seeing you can see the mark after 9 that is 9 is the 45th mark and after 45th mark that is 46th mark is exactly coincident with the uh, with any line of the main scale so i am showing it by keeping a lens also so that you can see it very clearly the mark after 9 9 is the 45th and the next is the 46th even you can say after that that is 47th mark is coincident 47th is exactly coincident with the mark on the main scale so 47 division is the reading of the vernier scale so main scale reading is 7.9 and vernier scale reading is 46 so obviously the total reading will be 7.9 plus 47 multiplied by 0.002 so that will be the length of the magnet so this way i get the length of the magnet now i have to find the breadth of the magnet that is the breadth to find the breadth i am going to keep the perpendicular direction between the jaws now measuring the breadth as i have measured the length also we i am measuring the breadth in the case of breadth you can see the main scale reading is the 16th mark that is 1.6 cm or 16 mm is the main scale reading and at the same time the mark that is engraved as 3 after 3 the first mark that is 3 15th means 16th mark 
is exactly coincident on any mark on the main scale. So 16 is the uh, uh, vernier scale reading and uh, 1.6 centimeter is the main scale reading. So obviously you can find the total breadth. So now let, let us see the adjustment of the deflection magnetometer and before performing experiment we have to adjust this uh, deflection magnetometer in a specific direction means the arms of the magnetometer should be aligned along east west so that the magnetic needle will be aligned along north south. So for doing that first we have to align the zero of the magnetometer this zero of the magnetometer the line joining these two zero must be parallel to the axis of the magnetometer and to do this what we do we take a scale we keep the scale in such a way that zero zero are on the scale now you can see this scale which is kept above is not it is not visible to you that it is touching 0 0 mark although to me it is visible that it is 0 0 but if you want to have according to you obviously this is 0 mark and this is 0 mark now you can see the 0 0 0 0 is on the above scale and the magnetometer axis this scale is this scale is not aligned with the above scale. So let us rotate the complete magnetometer, complete magnetometer that is the compass in such a way that the 0 0 gets aligned with the axis of the magnetometer. So I am rotating it, see the complete compass is being rotated and I have brought it just above the scale. Both side of the scale you can see the parallel line is left here in this in this in this portion you can see here also you can see there is a definite gap left so now the scale has become parallel means 0 0 of the compass is aligned with the axis of the magnetometer so this is the first adjustment now what i do i i i lift and replace this scale now my 0 0 you can see is aligned along the axis this 0 is aligned here this zero is aligned here. Now this is the position or uh, this is the adjustment of the compass. Now you can see that this magnetic needle is pointing towards north but my, my the, this pointers, pointers are not aligned at zero zero. So let me align the pointer also at zero zero when this will happen my complete magnetometer will be aligned along east west direction means one arm will be in the east direction, second arm will be at the west direction. So for doing this, what I do is, I start rotating the complete magnetometer. Initially I was rotating the compass to make the 0, 0 alignment. Now I am moving the complete magnetometer in such a way that my pointer is going to come to 0, 0 level. You can see, I am moving it. I am moving slowly to bring the pointer to 0, 0. Now it is at 20 degree. I am still moving it. So now it is at 10 degree. 10 degree. Yes. Slowly I have to rotate this to make, to bring the pointer to 0 mark. Now you can see the pointer has come to 0. Now it is exactly 0. To you it is not visible because the camera is a bit tilted but to me, to the experimenter it is very much clear that now the arms are aligned along east-west and the pointers are at 0, 0. You can see the pointer as well as you can see the image of the pointer. Whenever you have to take reading, you have to keep your head in such a position that the pointer and the image are coincident. Then only you are going to take reading. Now my arm is aligned along east-west. 
the pointer is also at zero now we start performing the experiment with the help of deflection magnetometer what we have to do is we have to take a specific magnet we have to keep the magnet exactly at certain distance from the magnetometer center of the magnetometer and then we have to find what is the deflection produced so, so total eight reading for one position are to be taken so let us first try to find the uh, deflection for a definite position of the magnet. So now we start performing the experiment. See I have brought the north pole of the magnet in one arm and when I am, when I am keeping it around say 10 centimeter from the center, you can see it is the 10 centimeter mark. Then the deflection is above 70, it is above 70 around 80. So we have to take the, we have to choose the position for which the deflection lies between 30 degree to 60 degree. That is why I slide it in the backward direction and I try to bring it around say this 12 centimeter mark and when I am keeping it at 12 degree. 12 centimeter you can see the deflection is still above the 60 degree that is why I move my magnet still in the backward direction. So I am taking it again further away from the center of the magnetometer and now you can see the reading is approximately 60 degree it is around 60 degree. Now, what we have to do from here I can start taking reading when the deflection is 60. So to adjust the magnet exactly at say 13 centimeter I keep this scale like this both the 30 cent 13 centimeter mark are going to be in contact here you can see this is the position this is the position where I am keeping the both both the 13 centimeter mark coincident with this scale and now I put the north pole of the magnet touching it. So this is exactly 13 centimeter adjustment. Now the north pole is in one arm and it is at 13 centimeter. Now I have to take the reading of the magnetometer. To take the reading of the magnetometer what I told you, you, you can see the pointer as well as the image of the pointer. So keep your head in, in, in such position that the, the image and the pointer are coincident. Here the reading is exactly 60 degree and here the reading is a bit 62 degree. So the reading will be 60, 62. It is 60, 62. Okay? Now in the second reading we are going to two readings we have obtained. Two readings we have obtained. Now, for next reading, I am going to slide it to say 14 centimeter and sliding in for it 14 centimeter. Again, I tap a little bit and again I want to find the reading. Now you can see the reading of this pointer is around 50 degree and this is around 52 degree. So 50, 52, four readings I have taken. So two readings or in one arm having a definite pole. In the third I am keeping the face at say 15 centimeter mark. Again I see this is at the 15 centimeter. The magnet is exactly at 15 centimeter. This is kept at 15 centimeter and now I am going to take the reading of the magnetometer. It is around say 20 sorry 19 degree. It is 19 degree and obviously this will be 20, 21 degree. So in this arm keeping north face I have taken reading. Now what I have to do is in the same positions say in 13 centimeter I have to bring the south pole to the 13 centimeter. Now the south pole is touching the 13 centimeter mark. Now again I have to take the reading of the magnetometer. I tap it a bit. You can see the reading for the 13 centimeter is above 60 degree. It is above 60 degree so I bring it backward. I bring it to this position. Now still it is larger at 15 centimeter.
you can see how the difference can be in the reading because the two poles are not having the same magnetic strength so when i have kept it at 18 cm mark you can see the readings is very near to 60 so again if i take the reading it is 62 it is 60 62 60 so in this way i do this in one, one arm the same thing is repeated in the next arm and when we get the readings for both the arms for example suppose i have taken a distance of 15 cm i am going to get two readings theta 1 theta 2 then i have changed the polarity i am going to find theta 3 theta 4 then i keep the same at the 15 cm mark north pole towards the magnetic uh, needle that will be theta 5 theta 6 and i when rotate and keep the south pole towards the magnet again i am going to get two readings that is theta 6 and uh, theta 7 and theta 8 so for a single reading for a single distance in both the arms i am going to get eight readings and the mean of that is going to be the theta for that specific distance so that is all about the deflection magnetometer now let us see how we can get the reading of the uh, vibration magnetometer now i have to adjust this magnetometer that is the second magnetometer that is deflection uh, vibration magnetometer along the direction of north south and for that what i am doing i am keeping this magnetometer just above this box and i am adjusting the zero zero line of this magnetometer exactly perpendicular to the axis of this magnetometer the zero zero is perpendicular to the axis of this magnetometer so this is the position and when i keep it what i see is the zero zero mark is the pointer is not pointing zero zero mark so slowly i rotate the complete magnetometer in such a way that the mark reaches 0, 0. Now you can see it is exactly coincident to 0, 0. This is the position of north-south. Means now the axis of my, my this vibration magnetometer is aligned along the north-south direction. So this was the adjustment. Now we are going to keep the magnet on this magnetometer and we will try to find the reading of oscillations, number of oscillations and the time taken for that. Now let us see, this is the magnetometer, I am opening the window, I have aligned the magnetometer along north-south direction. I open this window and opening this window, I put the magnet in such a way that the magnet uh, is kept stationary, means it takes the mean position where it, it, it becomes stationary. So, in this position, I try to make the magnet, put the magnet inside the magnetometer in this way. And I close this window slowly and I let the magnet be stationary for certain specific time because now it is uh, moving uh, to and fro so this motion should be avoided so i am going to give it ample time so that this becomes stationary and it aligns properly along north south direction now this is the magnet and it is approximately stationary now i bring another magnet near it to give a little bit oscillation you can see the magnet starts oscillating this is the oscillation produced in the magnet now we will try to count the number of oscillations and we, at the same time we are going to see the time taken. The time will be measured with the help of the stopwatch, uh, the working of which has already been told to you and the least count is obviously 1 by 100th of the second. So let us start uh, counting the oscillations and the time taken. So let us start counting. Whenever this is going to cross the reference line, we are going to start and again when it touches it, we will consider it one complete oscillation. So I start just now. 
I start counting. I have not started yet. I am going to start just now. So this is one complete oscillation. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine and ten. Now, see the time taken for these ten oscillations. We are going to see the time. Time taken is you can see in this stop clock. The time taken is equal to forty-six point. Three second. In the stopwatch, you can see the time. It is forty-six point three second. So the time taken becomes equal to forty-six point three. So that's all in this observation. Uh, we have already taken the length of the magnet. So see the readings taken. Uh, you can see here the least count of the vernier calipers. As I told you, it is point zero two mm or point zero zero two centimeter. we have seen that the zero error is equal to zero we have taken the um, uh, the length of the magnet which is equal to 7.99 cm and the breadth of the magnet we have taken 1.62 cm mass of the magnet is measured with the help of the digital balance it came to be equal to 39.92 grams actually it came to be 39920 milli uh, that is uh, milligrams Uh, so converted in grams it becomes equal to 39.92 grams the least count of the stopwatch as i told you it is 1 by 100th of the second so it is equal to 0.01 second so this is the first observation general observation about the magnet with the help of which we are going to get the moment of inertia of the magnet so second set of reading which is taken uh, with the help of the deflection magnetometer you can see first reading serial number 1 the face of the magnet was at a distance of 12 cm from the magnetometer but the distance is to be taken from the center of the magnetometer so obviously what we have to do is we have to add half of the length of the magnet to the this reading that is 12 so that we can get the reading of 15.99 3.99 is the half of the length of the magnet so it becomes equal to 15.99 cm when the north pole was facing magnetometer in the east arm then the theta 1 was 54 theta 2 56 when the south pole was facing in the east arm at the same distance it is 60 62 when the next arm north pole was facing the magnetometer it is 57 55 when the south pole was facing it is 54 56 so when we take the average of all these eight we get the deflection of 56.75 cm now we, when we take the 10 of this mean angle it comes to, it comes to be 1.52 similarly then we increase the distance face of the magnet is at a distance of 12.5 so center of the magnet will be at a distance of 12.5 plus 3.99 that is 16.49 for that eight readings of theta are taken and the average of those eight readings is taken to be 53.50 the 10 theta becomes equal to 1.35 so this is all about the deflection magnetometer reading we go on increasing the distance of the face uh, by 1 cm or 0.5 cm i have varied it with 1 cm so after 13 14 15 16 cm face distance from the magnetometer was there so this is the way in which we get the reading of the deflection magnetometer now the second is the vibration magnetometer time period of oscillation is to be determined and that has been done so let us see how the reading comes so see the reading of the vibration magnetometer serial number 1 we have taken 20 oscillations 
we find the time to be equal to 90.33 seconds so to get the time period to get the time period what we do we divide this time by 20 oscillations to get the time of one oscillation it comes to be 4.52 seconds similarly for 30 oscillations time was equal to 143 that is 2 minutes 23 seconds and 0 point fraction of second so the total is 143.6 second 143 divided by 30 comes to be equal to 4.77 similarly for 40 oscillations we have taken time and got the time period that is uh, the time period of oscillation uh, we have to get the mean of all these so i have to add 4.52 4.77 4.75 the total is to be divided by 3 to get the mean oscillation time which comes to be equal to 4.68 seconds so this was all this is all about the reading now let us try to calculate the h that is horizontal component of earth's magnetic field now see the calculation in the calculation first we have to calculate the moment of inertia of the magnet for that the formula is w multiplied by l square plus b square divided by 12 where w is the mass of the magnet l is the length of the magnet b is the breadth of the magnet Putting the value, mass is 39.92 grams, length of the magnet is 7.99 centimeter square plus B that is breadth is 1.62 whole square divided by 12 which comes to be equal to 203.64 gram centimeter square. So this is the moment of inertia. Now the formula for horizontal component is it is 2 pi divided by T multiplied by D square minus L square the pi is having a value of 3.14 t is the time period which we have we have been calculating and that is equal to 4.68 seconds d is the distance of the center of the magnet from the needle uh, that is for the first reading it is 15.99 centimeter and l is the length of the magnet which is 7.99 multiplied by 2 i that is moment of inertia multiplied by the distance of the magnet uh, distance of the center of the magnet from the magnetic needle divided by the 10 theta for that specific distance d putting for the first we are going to getting the value of h1 that is horizontal components first value which we are obtaining uh, obtaining experimentally so for that we are keeping all the values from the first reading <coughs> that is 2 multiplied by 3.14 divided by time period 4.68 multiplied by the distance for the first which is 15.99 square minus l length of the magnet that is 7.99 square multiplied by 2 multiplied by i which value uh, uh, is 2.203.64 multiplied by the d that is 15.99 divided by the 10 theta for that specific distance that is equal to 1.52 when i calculate it what i get is the value becomes equal to 4.0.457. Similarly, for second reading, we get the value of H2, third we get H3, for fourth H4, fifth H5 and sixth H6. So six reading, six values of H that is horizontal component is obtained. Now all the, those six uh, values are added and divided by six to find the average of mean of the horizontal component of earth's magnetic field. So that is all in the experiment of getting value of horizontal component of earth's magnetic field with the help of deflection and vibration magnetometer.